when I had settled in Yellow Springs and bought my house in 1990 on Pleasant Street, uh, I was visited by Reverend Matthews' widow, Pat Matthews Howard, several times. We had wonderful conversations because she had lived in that house. That was their house. And in fact, when they bought that house uh, on Pleasant Street, it into, they integrated the north end of Yellow Springs by the purchase of that home. And after several conversations, she mentioned her daughter, Westina. So I, I had no idea that that was Westie's home, too. So um, it's wonderful to see Westina again after 50 years. Uh, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I was very interested in reading about uh, what the encyclopedia had to say. And I learned a lot about um, Reverend Matthews, that not only was he one of the, the organizers and first director of the senior center, but... He had two residencies in Yellow Springs in the 40s and then in the 60s and 70s, extremely influential at Central Chapel AME and as a community organizer in town. I was a little surprised that I didn't know about him um, after having been on the, the uh, Senior Center board for two years. So I called up Karen McKee and we talked about it and we agreed that it was not well known and that it should be. Um, and we uh, really envisioned that there should be something on the outside of the senior center that commemorated him uh, so that residents or anyone visiting town would be able to see along with the Wheeling Gaunt sculpture, the historical marker uh, at the library for Virginia Hamilton and other landmarks that Yellow Springs has a rich and important black history. We also realized through our research that his ideas and organization of the original senior center were so central to this current uh, form of the organization that the history should be more widely known. Uh, when Karen and I presented our idea to the board, they were very enthusiastic about the project and Kathy Hill immediately expressed her support and interest and thus our little team was born. So Kathy, Karen and I met regularly by Zoom, often weekly throughout the last 15 months uh, to bring this project to fruition. We consulted local and Wright State archives for information on Reverend Matthews. We talked to family members. We worked with several community organizations to build support for the project, including 365, of course, Central Chapel AME, the Yellow Springs Arts Commission, and others. The fundraising was helped significantly by a grant from the Yellow Springs Community Foundation and also through the Senior Center's Giving Tuesday fundraising last year. We, along with the board, wanted this to be a beautiful work of public art as well. We first spoke to Brian Mom, the Wheeling Gaunt sculptor for advice. He pointed us to the Pennsylvania company that is creating the plaque. Unfortunately and sadly, as we all know, Brian passed away unexpectedly. So we were unable to bring him in to do the bronze casting for the Reverend Matthews face. Um, but there are artists at this uh, organization in Pennsylvania that did the casting. Actually, the casting is finished. The plaque is actually finished yesterday. Um, and so it's been delayed a number of times, but we will have it here hopefully this summer to actually install on the front of the senior center. And we have a photo of it that we'll show you at the end. Um, so today we have a short program featuring some representatives from several organizations and family members to make some brief comments about Reverend Matthew's legacy. Good evening, I'm Karen McKee and I have the honor of introducing you to Dr. Westina Matthews Satine. Westina has for over 35 years uh, turned her passion and her creativity into realities for many, many community, community members where she has lived. An accomplished author, sought after public speaker, a retired Wall Street executive, Dr. Matthews has received numerous honors for her commitment both in the boardroom and for her community service. She has offered three books uh, in the Have a Little Faith series, contributed several forward movement anthologies, including a year of daily meditation and wisdom found, stories of women transfigured by faith, and was a frequent contributor to the Sacred Journey, the Journal of Fellowship in Faith as well. 
Her latest book is entitled Dancing from the Inside Out, Grace-Filled Reflections on Growing Older. That was published in 2019. Dr. Um, Westina Matthews is a graduate of the Spiritual Guidance Program at the Shalim Institute of Spiritual Formation. For the past nine years, she has been an adjunct professor at General Theology Seminary, where she teaches contemplative living through holy listening. Dr. Matthews' legacy is giving back to her community, much like her father's. And as uh, a preacher's daughter, she has carried that legacy proudly throughout her career. I am very proud to present to you Dr. Westina Matthews Shaleen, daughter of Dr. Wesley Matthews. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can share the screen. Ah, she did it. Okay. <clears throat> On behalf of the family of Reverend Wesley Matthews, our hearts are overflowing with deep gratitude for this recognition. Just imagine, 62 years ago, the Yellow Springs Senior Citizen Center was founded, and it is still thriving today. Wesley Matthews was an energetic visionary who spent his lifetime in service. Let me share with you a little bit about our father. Born in Georgia in 1912, after graduating high school, he came up north to study at Wilberforce University. Because he was from the South, his friends began to call him Tampa, which stuck over the years. They didn't quite get that he was from Georgia, not Florida, but he was called Tampa. Folk folklore passed down says that Tampa Avenue in T Dayton <clears throat> was named after him when he was the first black recreation supervisor at Linden Community Center. Being the big man on campus, he came back for homecoming and snatched up Pat the Lamb in 1934, and he married our mother, Ruth Pat Matthews, just as she finished up her freshman year of college. Coming from a long line of AME ministers, including his father, who was a presiding elder, and an older brother who was a minister, Dad returned to Wilberforce to study at Payne Theological Seminary, and in 1949, was sent to Central Chapel in Yellow Springs, his first church. Mom always said that if she wouldn't have married Dad if she'd known he was going to become a preacher. Among his many endeavors in Yellow Springs during this first stint was leading a sit-in to integrate Yellow Springs' only motion picture theater, yes, the Little Art Theater. Dad pastored in Chillicothe, Ohio, that's where Domina and I were born, and then in Springfield, Ohio, where Kreza was born. One of his proudest accomplishments was to receive an honorary doctorate from Monrovia College in Liberia, a country founded by free people of color from the United States. He is Reverend Dr. Wesley S. Matthews. It was in 1959 when Arthur Morgan, and our father joined forces to establish the Yellow Springs Senior Citizen Center to serve the needs of elderly citizens of the community. <clears throat> Three years later, Dad moved the family from Springfield to Yellow Springs. Dad was initially part-time, but, be but became full-time when the center moved from that old municipal building. Remember the mayor's office and the jail cells that were in front. I don't know if you remember that, I'm dating myself, on limestone to a large room in the back of a building on Xenia Avenue. To generate revenue for the center, he ground wheat and bag flour for sale. And then there was the thrift shop. I remember how dad would pile us into the car the week after the students arrived on campus in Antioch to pick up the perfectly beautiful, brand new, expensive clothes the students were discarding. <clears throat> One moment. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so that he could resell them at the thrift shop. And the students in turn shopped at the thrift shop to find you bell bottoms, t-shirts, and sandals. It seemed like a fair trade. Eventually, the center was able to rent the space in front, 
And it was from there that the center began delivering hot meals, providing transportation, and offering lots of activities. With what would seem like boundless energy, remember, Dad was still pastoring a church in, in Urbana, Ohio. He founded the Greene County Commission on Aging and was an active participant in national conferences on aging. Failing health resulted in his retirement, yet you could still always find dad around town impeccably dressed, ready to listen, offer a prayer, and share a good joke. He passed away on May 30th, 1979. In August of that year, he was named Outstanding Senior Citizen of the Year in ceremonies at the Ohio State Fair. The honor was given in grateful recognition of exceptional service and contributions to the welfare and betterment of the community. Because of the work of dad, the Yellow Springs Senior Citizen Center was nationally known as a small town center for seniors. And so it is with great joy and a very deep sense of gratitude that our family wishes to thank each and every one of you for this recognition. A special thank you to that small but mighty committee of Karen and Katie and Kathy for leading this effort. And a big virtual hug to my sister Domina, her daughter Barbara and her granddaughter Cassidy in, in Dayton, Ohio, to my sister Kreza in Virginia, and to Domina's son Wesley and his children, Tyler, Nicole, and Wesalina in Texas. They're all here with us virtually and I'm in Savannah, Georgia. We are very proud four generations as we strive to continue the legacy of Reverend Dr. Wesley S. Matthews. Thank you and God bless. Thanks so much, Westina. It's so good to see you <laughs> after all these years. That was a wonderful um, history, and I really appreciate that, that uh, firsthand view of it. Um, I think we could probably say that this project came directly uh, as a result of 365 and their work to recenter the history and influence of black citizens in the creation of Yellow Springs as a community-centered and caring village. And uh, we owe a, a real debt of gratitude to 365 for all they've done in, in this way, but especially for us to um, be able to celebrate and honor and commemorate um, a really uh, you know, wonderful um, community organizer on the plaque, you'll see that there's a quote and it says, looking, looking out for each other. And that's a quote from Reverend Matthews that I think really kind of speaks to who he was. So uh, I wanted to welcome John Gudgel from 365. I don't think John needs too much in, uh, introduction in this crowd, but I'll just mention that he is retiring now from the um, village mediation. And uh, so congratulations on that, John. And um, you can have the floor. Thank you, Katie. The first, the only, one of the few, Dr. Matthews is smiling because she knows that quote. And it was a quote that I ran across pertaining, pertaining to her, which was in a University of Dayton publication where she earned her bachelor's and master's degree. I'll read the quote again from Westina. The first, the only, one of the few. And like her father and her mother, her family was a family of first. In fact, what Tina didn't mention, but I'm gonna share it because I've got the microphone so I can say this. She was the first black homecoming queen at the University of Dayton in 1966. Think about that, 1966 at a predominantly white university, a black homecoming queen. So like her father, she achieved many firsts. And in terms of looking at the term, the first, she, along with others, have read and know about some of the many firsts that Reverend Matthews achieved. He was a trailblazer. 
Reverend Mayor, you probably know that Reverend Matthews integrated Central Chapel AME Church. He also started the High Street Community Center, High Street in Yellow Springs. He developed a playground right next to Central Chapel Church. Within the 365 project, within our mission statement, we state that the 365 project is to promote diverse African American heritage. Dr. Matthews certainly fulfills that term, heritage. His mentality at first has just really impacted the whole village of Yellow Springs because of so many things he did. And I'm a firm believer that there are trailblazers who set forth trails before us. And so I mentioned that his daughter became the first black homecoming queen at the University of Dayton. And then I look up about 10 or 15 years later in Westina, I grew up on North Stafford Street. So we were right around the corner from each other. We part of North Side Yellow Springs. But the Robinson family, their daughter, Jo Franny, when she went to the University of Dayton, she was one of the first, if not first, black cheerleader at the University of Dayton. So you see this impact, this trickle down effect from your father through you to one of our neighbors. And then, as fate would have it, I earned two master's degrees at the University of Dayton. And then my granddaughter, she goes to the University of Dayton. So all this trickle effect that takes place because of trailblazers such as Reverend Matthews. Now, some of you may already know that when you frequent Gaunt Park, often uh, right around July 4th, you'll sit on the hill. Does anybody know what was under that hill? That hill used to be a trash dump. But because of the efforts of Reverend Matthews and his wife, they were able to remove that dump and they were very influential in the construction of the swimming pool along with the sports fields. Growing up in Central Chapel Church, I looked at trailblazers such as Doc, Dr. Reverend Matthews. And it was in 2008 when I gathered some of my contemporaries to form the 365 Project. And it was due in part to individuals such as Reverend Matthews, Wheeling Gaunt, J James McKee, Paul Graham, Jewel Graham, Alice Earl Jenkins, and others who were part of that mentality of first. The Blacks in Yellow Springs Encyclopedia, if you look on your screen, my cohort, my partner, Dr. Kevin Magruder, he has been the main mover and shaker of the history reflections of Blacks in Yellow Springs. And if we can give him a virtual round of applause, because of Dr. Kevin Magruder, all of the history of Blacks in Yellow Springs would probably just be the oral history, that oral history that is shared by word of mouth, but because of what Dr. Kevin Magruder has done, he has been able to gather people and gather the information and put it in print. So thank you, Dr. Magruder, for a job well done. I'll just end with this. Um, the Sankofa bird, this is a mythical bird of Ghana with the belief that the planning for the future requires an understanding and recovering the knowledge of the past. Again, the Sankofa bird, mythical bird of Ghana, the belief that planning for the future requires an understanding and recovering the knowledge of the past. We are grateful that in reflecting in the past that we are fulfilling a long overdue recognition of a person who did many firsts, Dr. Reverend Matthews. Thank you. Thank you, John. My name is Kathy Hill, and I will introduce our next presenter, Reverend Mornay Mayer. Reverend Mayer originally was from Cape Town, South Africa, and has been at the pastor at Central Chapel AME Church since 2019. Like Dr. Reverend Dr. Wesley S. Matthews, Reverend Mayer has a heart for outreach ministry, and his goal is to increase the outreach to the village of Yellow Springs. Reverend Mayer was quoted as say, saying recently that he believes the church needs to meet people where they are. 
Reverend Mayor. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Uh, special greetings to the director, members of the board staff, family, and a special greetings to the Matthews family uh, here present. It is Paul that reminds me in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 10, when he reminds us to love each other with genuine affection and to take delight in honoring each other. I want to take this first opportunity to thank the Senior Center for honoring the late Reverend Dr. Wesley S. Matthews, who served as pastor of Central Chapel AME Church. Thank you for commemorating and honoring his commitment to serve the congregation and his contribution to the Yellow Springs community. Now, as you've heard from um, Dr. Gajal, that we have Dr. Kevin Magruder in our congregation who serves as our professor and our historiographer. And he will share on my behalf of the history of Reverend Dr. Matthews and Central Chapel AME Church, Dr. Kevin Magruder. Thank you, Reverend Mayor. And uh, thank you, uh, Yellow Spring Senior Center for inviting us to be part of this program. Uh, John Gudgel had mentioned that I was part of the Blacks and Yellow Springs Encyclopedia, and I did uh, coordinate that. But the, the fact that that encyclopedia exists really demonstrates the importance of the Senior Center's work, that there was a committee of elders. Karen McKee and I were the youngest members of that, but it included Phyllis Jackson, Isabel Newman, William Simpson, and Joe Lewis. And we really depended on the elders for ideas about who should be included. And that points to why it's important, like John was saying, to collect these memories and get them down on paper. The world that Reverend Dr. Man Matthews came to in Yellow Springs in the 40s, I think you heard from what uh, Westina Matthews Shatine mentioned, uh, Yellow Springs was segregated. It was, to some it was, that segregation was unseen, but it was, and it's important for us to have that history too and acknowledge it so that we can understand where we move forward. When we look at what Reverend Matthews did at Central Chapel, it reflects a movement of the churches and synagogues that goes back to the late 19th century called the social gospel. And it's appeared when religious institutions are seeing that they have a charge to improve the community around them. And so the fact that Reverend Matthews, when he came to Central Chapel, created a playground on a vacant lot right next to the church, eventually created an enrichment program for boys that was in the parsonage of the church. And then, as John was saying, created the Hyatt Street Community Center. All of those things connect to his clear understanding that the church had a role to play in improving the community. But he also saw the community as broader than that. So the Little Art Theater, at when he came to Yellow Springs, their practice was they had a rope that was at the back of the theater and Black people had to sit behind that rope. And they have a plaque on their building now acknowledging the event that Reverend Matthews was involved with that led to that integration. And so when we look at his record, um, I'm inspired by it because I've been at Central Chapel for about nine years and we have, it, it's a, it's an inspiration to us now in 2021. How do we continue to contribute to this community? Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a, a free clinic there. And that was in the spirit of the work that Reverend Matthews was doing. We're going to be reopening soon after over a year of being closed. And we're in conversation now about how do we continue to, to meet that that charge and that inspiration. And so we 
appreciate the senior center for acknowledging the work that Reverend Matthews did and what that acknowledgement and things like the Blacks in Yellow Springs Encyclopedia do for those of us who are following is it shows us what's possible, but it also helps to keep us motivated in terms of continuing to do the work. And so again, thank you so much for inviting us and congratulations on, on this plaque. Yes, she's here. She's here. Oh, um, again, I'm Karen McKee, and I have a pleasure of introducing you to Cheryl Durgans. Cheryl Durgans is a professional artist and film producer. She is currently associate editor and reporter for the Yellow Springs News. She has a very long and uh, successful academic career that includes studying of fine arts at Spelman College, cultural studies and creative writing at the University of uh, Pennsylvania, and studio arts at Moore College of Art and Design. Cheryl is a licensed massage therapist and herbalist. She co-produces the Little Village Show here in Yellow Springs and assists in the production of the annual 10-minute play festival. Cheryl is also chairman of the Yellow Springs Arts and Cultural Commission. The, arts, uh, the Yellow Springs Arts and Cultural Commission is a local advisory board that informs village council on various proposed public art projects. She is currently spearheading the Yellow Springs Arts Council's effort to erect a life-size bronze statue of Mr. Wheeling Gaunt. Um, and I will let Cheryl give you further information about the many projects that she has in. She's here this evening as a support of Dr. Wesley's project. Uh, good evening, everybody. I Thank you so much. It's an honor to um, learn so much about who Reverend Matthews is. And I want to also acknowledge uh, Miss Westina and thank you so much for uh, just providing us with so much information about our elders uh, in the community here. Uh, there's one thing I want to say, though. I um, will say that I cannot take claim for or credit for the 10 minute plays. Um, at all. I do support them. Hope everybody shows up or, you know, in some way can see them. But that uh, is a bailiwick that is not, I am not a theater person. Um, what I will say is this, uh, when we found out that the Arts and Culture Commission is what I currently chair, and we found out about uh, the efforts for the Reverend, Reverend Matthews plaque, um, we absolutely were all in in terms of supporting this effort. And we actually, I will say, see it as this convergence. We, um, it's a convergence of a lot of different things. It's a convergence of the 365 project and their tireless effort in making sure that the voices of our African-American residents that have lived in the village uh, past and current um, are acknowledged and are documented, which is absolutely critical. Um, the segue and the similarities in terms of that historical legacy between Will and Gaunt kind of coming in in the 1800s and then seeing this legacy of um, Reverend Dr. Matthews continuing the work of community service, uh, I have to acknowledge um, his wife, uh, Pat Matthews, because I stand on her shoulders being at the Yellow Springs News right now. Uh, this is a huge honor for me. And as a matter of fact, I have been doing archival dump. Uh, I mean, I've been going down rabbit holes. I have a lot of work to do, but I get in those archives and then I see the articles around a chat with Pat and I am just hooked. And so I want to acknowledge there are so many ways in which these connections work. Uh, I literally was thinking about um, the fact that in the 1950s, when the pool was coming online um, and how it was reported in the Yellow Springs News, the importance of the 365 project is that um, the, the Matthews got very little credit. And I'm sure that they were, um, you know, that's not what they were for 
clearly they were clearly people that were not about taking credit for things that needed to be done in the community, but it still needs to be historically documented. And so I want to encourage everybody, wherever you are, um, every time you walk past the senior center, if you, to, to um, basically, I would say, say a little prayer, homage, you know, that kind of thing, but also to tell people about the legacy of Reverend Matthews, because it is absolutely important documentation, institutional memory as we're, as, as the senior center, center is building um, is absolutely critical. And it, and it actually goes beyond um, Reverend Matthews. It actually goes beyond um, the senior center. Yellow Springs in general is losing its institutional memory across the board. And we need everybody on board to make sure that legacy and lineage is acknowledged and continued. So on that note, I'm just going to kind of conclude with an update on the Will and Gaunt Sculpture Project. We were trying to make it happen so that, you know, Reverend Matthews plaque unveiling and then um, willing gone and trying to make that kind of work, but then there was COVID and, you know, I, um, so we couldn't quite make that happen, but I still think that once we get some things going, we'd still like to do kind of a formal kind of cross segment thing. Um, I want to give honor to our ancestors, Brian Mon, sculptor, Again, because again, there's that connection. He did the Will and God sculpture and Pat Matt and the Reverend uh, uh, Matthews uh, plaque. And then also, let me just please give a huge shout out to um, Miss Phyllis Jackson because um, her historical shoulders are just, I mean, we're, they're, they're giant. And so, the Willing God sculpture is in the foundry right now. Um, we expect that that will be back probably by August, and we will be laying out plans for uh, the erection of that sculpture to be coming somewhere in the fall, hopefully. And I just, I'm just pleased and honored, and I appreciate so much um, being able to be here with everybody um, on this special day, and thank you again. Thanks so much, Cheryl, and thanks uh, so much to the Yellow Springs Arts and Culture Commission for um, really supporting this, this project, too. It really meant a lot to us. Um, I just want to say, following up on John, I'm glad you spilled the beans about the uh, homecoming queen because I've worked on a lot of campaigns in my life, but the very first one I ever worked on was Westy Matthews for homecoming queen. <laughs> and so it could sort of set something in my life. And so thank you again, Westina. Um, so now I just want to hand it over to um, Carolyn Mullen, the executive director of the Senior Center, and um, she'll have the mayor's proclamation. Hi, um, I have to say that being a part of this is a real honor for me. Uh, this has been a, a fast paced month that I just started here at the center, but being a part of honoring the legacy of this village and the people who have made a difference in the village is extremely important. Um, we, we have to remember the elders that came ahead of us and made all of this possible. So. Um, thank you again to the committee for making it possible. I know we're going to have a new piece of beauty out in front of the building. So the mission of the Senior Center has probably been modified a bit since Dr. Matthews was here, but the mission is to enhance the dignity and quality of life of seniors for Yellow Springs and Miami Township and to foster interaction amongst them with the total community. And I know that he set that standard. Um, he was about helping people find jobs. He was about giving people meaningful engagement. Um, it wasn't just a matter of what services can we provide seniors, but he did all of that. But it was about making sure people had experiences that enriched their lives and gave them a purpose. Um, one of the stories I love to see the photos of is that he had a nine-seater station wagon. It was the old Woody-style station wagon, and he would load the seniors in for transportation. I'm trying to figure out who was in the back seat of those, if you remember the way they would flip up. I, I spent some time in those myself in the 70s. So um, he really had such meaningful ways 
to provide service opportunities for people as well as allow the seniors who needed assistance to feel comfortable asking for help. Um, one of the things that I found from 1967 was a statement, and I expect he was part of writing this. It said, the Senior Citizen Center cannot and should not operate in a vacuum. People make it live. And we hope to help people live long, happy, and useful lives. So I, I think that's true to what he had envisioned for the center all along. So if you'll give me a moment, I'm going to switch to the other screen and I will run the video of Mayor Pam Conine, who uh, has made a proclamation for us. Just a moment. Hi, folks. Folks, it's the Senior Center here for the annual meeting. And at this point, for the unveiling of the plaque for Dr. Wesley Matthews, I can't be with you in person today, I'm out of town, but thanks to Sean Devine there behind the camera, our Channel 5 guy, I'm able to share my proclamation with you in live time. Dr. Wesley S. Matthews was a ver venerable figure in Yellow Springs history, and I want to share some details now with you about his, his life and the legacy he leaves in our village. This information comes from a couple of folks on the board there who were critical in this project of the plaque, and also my information comes from my copy of Blacks in Yellow Springs Encyclopedia which was of great use in putting the uh, proclamation together. So I want to thank the 365 Project and the folks involved with that for the information that I contained herein. What are we celebrating? Well, we're celebrating the Reverend Dr. Wesley S. Matthews Recognition Day today. I'm going to dispense with a lot of the whereases and just read the information about this man's life because I want you to hear some of the basic facts of his varied and extremely meaningful life here in Yellow Springs as it pertains to the Senior Center and more. Whereas, the village of Yellow Springs is honoring the legacy of Reverend Dr. Wesley S. Matthews as a critical figure in the long history of black citizens of Yellow Springs and is recognizing and preserving highlights of his life in this document. This is another reason I wanted to do this. The proclamation will be saved and recorded and will be passed down for history in our village. Very important. As a young man, Wesley Matthews received the Atlanta Journal-Herald's Distinguished Cup for being the best all-around student in Atlanta, Georgia in 1935. Quite an accomplishment. Following his graduation from Wilberforce University and working with the Linden Community Center in Dayton, he began forming ideas about the importance of recreational programs for seniors. And after returning to Wilberforce to study at Payne Theological Seminary, he was assigned to Central Chapel AME Church in Yellow Springs in 1941. He then created a community playground in a vacant lot next to the church, established an enrichment program for boys in the parsonage, set up volunteer-run recreational classes, and he led a sit-in to integrate the village's only motion picture theater at the time. What became known as the High Street Community Center was noted as an interracial program, and Central Chapel was integrated peacefully. After stints in Cincinnati and Chillicothe, Reverend Dr. Matthews was assigned to Trinity AME in Springfield. It brought him back into contact with Yellow Springs, where he became part-time director for the newly organized Yellow Springs Senior Center, a position he held for 15 years, bringing recognition at a national level as a model program for seniors. And then, Reverend Dr. Matthews helped to organize and subsequently to direct the Greene County Commission on Aging. 
Now therefore, in recognition of all that Reverend Dr. Matthews has done to enrich the lives of seniors in Yellow Springs and elsewhere, I hereby declare Thursday, June 24th, 2021, to be Dr. Wesley Matthews Recognition Day in the village of Yellow Springs, which will forever honor his memory. Thank you. As you can see, there's a picture of the plaque, which we will soon have. <laughs> and it says, Reverend Dr. Wesley S. Matthews, founder and first director, 1960 to 1977, of the Yellow Springs Senior Center. Reverend Matthews' love and care for older adults motivated him to organize local leadership and other community members to create the first Yellow Springs Senior Center. Reverend Matthews served as its director for 16 years and went on to help found and become the first director of the Greene County Commission on Aging. Today, the Yellow Springs Senior Center continues to carry out his vision by providing an array of services that enhance the dignity and quality of life for senior adults living in Yellow Springs and Miami Township. And the quote at the bottom, looking out for each other. And we would like to thank each of the presenters for participating in today's program and each of the sponsors and everyone who assisted with the program. In addition, there is a display at the Yellow Springs Library. And I hope that um, those of you who are here in Yellow Springs, or if you happen to come within the next month, that you'll be able to see it. Thank you. So with that, uh, we now have a few moments for anyone who'd like to share comments or questions. Please unmute yourself and uh, we will hopefully have somebody in the group be available to respond as well. I have no questions. I just once again want to say thank you um, uh, to the Senior Center and all participants. Um, thank you so, so much for this program um, and the manner that you are honoring the legacy of Reverend Dr. Matthew. So thank you so, so much for the excellent work you are doing. May God continue to bless your work. Thank you so much. No question. I just want to say I'm going to be in Yellow Springs. Well, I'm going to be in Dayton, and I'm trying to get my sister and my niece to agree to come on over to Yellow Springs. I want to, I um, uh, haven't been out of Savannah, and so we would love to be there. I hope we can do that. But I'll be back for the um, high school reunion in September. So John Gajo and all of you on that Project 365, I want you to think about how to let the Black alumni of Yellow Springs High School who are coming back for the reunion to know about your project, whether you meet at the library, where do you meet, how do we find out about things, you could sell your books. Um, so I'd love to work with you on that because this is the moment, let's seize this moment to get these archives. Cheryl, thank you for the work you're doing. And so I bet everybody's got stuff in their closet that you want, you want, you want to know that information. So I want to plant that seed. Wanting to put our website in the chat, um, so that's probably. Do you do you agree, Kevin? That might be one of the um, easiest ways to learn more about our organization. But yes, we look forward to seeing you in September, and perhaps we can even have you join one of our meetings, whether it's face to face if you're in town or via Zoom. We'd love to have you. Good afternoon. This is Barbara Matthews Papp, and I just wanted to say to all of you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for honoring my grandfather. This is wonderful. Um, my aunt and I have been in constant contact. I'm missing every day. I understand his strength and his power and where he was going with everything that he did in the city of Yellow Springs or the village of Yellow Springs. And I thank you for that. And I thank you for everything that you've done. 
We're excited to see these moving forward. I can't wait to see the movements we make, we make with my grandmother, with Will and Gaunt. They're stories untold. Stories untold that need to be told. And I can't wait to do that. And my Aunt Westina, you know I love you and you're amazing. Mr. Gudgel, you were my teacher once upon a time in middle school. So, you know, I'm dating myself and I don't mean to date you either. And as well as Pam. So thank you all for you have done. This has been a wonderful emotional roller coaster for me. And I'm sorry that I'm emotional, but it's beautiful. And I thank you. Was this recorded? Well, we be able to see this later somewhere, somehow? Yes, this has been simulcasted on Channel 5 Live in Town, and it is also going to be available as a YouTube. So we will share that link on uh, the Senior Center's website, and uh, I expect maybe the 365 Project's going to have the link on their site. Um, I'm sure we will also be sure that the Yellow Springs News shares some information about how people can access it. Yeah, quickly. Am I on the yeah. yeah, just wanted to add that we're going to have a QR code on the plaque so that anybody going by can access more information about Reverend Matthews, well, it'll be on the um, the website of the of the senior center. So uh, we're still trying to build that information, but that will be available to anybody who just walks by. Well, with that, I would like to thank everyone for being a part of this. Uh, it's been really nice to hear so much of his story. It's quite an expansive story, and I'm sure there's much more for us to learn. So I look forward to hearing how any other stories might gather once his plaque is out in front of the building. I think we will continue much more uh, education for ourselves about the history of Yellow Springs. So thanks everyone for attending and farewell. <laughs> Thank you.